Welcome back. So, let us continue from where we left off. Uh, in the last lecture towards the end, I was discussing the case of three securities, three risky assets. Uh, so, let us recap the salient features of that uh, development and then we will continue from there on. So, in the case of three security assets, the, the problem becomes more intriguing. You see the point is, when we are talking about two risky assets, uh, then this uh, we have got four unknowns. Basically, the standard deviation of the portfolio, the expected return of the portfolio and x 1 and x 2, which is the composition vector or the components of the composition vector uh, comprising the portfolio. And we have three feasibility equations as you can see in the right hand panel of your slide. Uh, now, using the three uh, uh, feasibility equations, we could eliminate both x 1 and x 2 and we arrived at a functional relationship between the uh, expected return and the standard deviation or vice versa. Now, this could be plotted in a two dimensional space and we got a hyperbola. Every point on this arc of the hyperbola that I am talking about represents a feasible portfolio. And and um, if you select a particular, if you have a particular value of sigma p, you can work out or you can uh, obtain the corresponding value of r p and vice versa uh, and uh, you can define the portfolio completely. In other words, uh, given uh, every point on this hyperbola corresponds to a uh, correspond to a feasible portfolio and we when you look at the arc of the hyperbola. Uh, upwards beyond the point of minimum variance m uh, onwards, then you arrive at the efficient frontier. So, the basic thing that I want to convey here is that in that case, the entire problem could be handled on a two dimensional framework, because the two dimensional representation provided a complete description of the problem. Given any point, we had a unique solution to the problem. However, now when we move to more than two securities, the simplest case being of three securities, what we have is five unknowns. Uh, we have sigma p and r p, which is uh, the portfolio standard deviation and the portfolio expected return. And then we also have the com components of the composition vector x 1, x 2 and x 3, which represent the constitution of the portfolio in terms of securities a, b and c. Now, uh, Yes, we have three uh, equations or the three equations representing the feasibility conditions as in the earlier case. Therefore, at best, at best we can eliminate two unknowns. Let us say we eliminate two unknowns x 1 and x 2. In that case, what happens is we have still three unknowns or three degrees of freedom, this uh, sigma p. Uh, expected return R p and the the composition or one component of the composition vector. Let us say, let us call it x 3. Let us assume that we eliminate x 1 and x 2 and we retain x 3 as a part of the uh, free variables or free degrees of freedom. And therefore, we now need a three dimensional space for a complete representation of the problem. Uh, so, that is the first step towards understanding the situation. Now, when we talk about a three dimensional uh, problem uh, or a three dimensional space. As you can see here, if I take this particular uh, pack of cards, it can be it is a three dimensional object and it can the three dimensional space that I am talking about which represents this pack of cards can be considered as a series of planes parallel for example, to the x y plane. Let us assume that the origin is on the left hand side corner of this pack. Uh, the x axis is the horizontal axis emanating from the origin, the y axis is the vertical axis and the z axis is oriented towards me uh, in the positive direction and away, away from me in the negative direction. Now, uh, you can see that this three dimensional object or this three dimensional space you may assume, uh, it can be represented by a series of planes uh, which are parallel to the x y plane. If I pick up any arbitrary plane, what happens is it would the plane would be represented by its perpendicular distance from the x y plane, which in the case of orthogonal coordinates in the case when x y and z are orthogonal would be nothing, but the z intercept of the plane as you can see uh, this particular let us say this is the point at which I make a cut off this is an arbitrary plane. And then this distance from the origin along the z axis, because z axis is oriented along me or towards me the cut off point of this plane with the z axis is sufficient uh, to completely identify this plane. Now, 
the th uh, the important thing is th all the points on this plane which let us say the the cutoff point is z is equal to k then all the points that lie on this plane z is equal to k have the z coordinate of k obviously x and y coordinates would vary with the uh, position of the point on this plane, but so long as the point lies on this plane uh, uh, z is equal to k the z coordinate will remain at k. Now, in our problem uh, the z axis represents the, uh, the constitution of the security c in our portfolio. Therefore, if we have a point on this particular uh, plane z equal to k that means, we have fixed the uh, composition of security k x security c in our portfolio at k. Uh, that means, if I pick up any point on this particular uh, plane that would comprise of uh, sec um, comprise of security c to the extent of k and of course, it would be a mix of securities a and b as well. Now, because this as far as this plane is concerned the composition of security c is fixed. Uh, that means, uh, in effect the the problem has been re reduced to a problem with two degrees of freedom sigma and r p and therefore, when we if we plot if we plot sigma and r p by varying the composition of a and b keeping the composition of c fixed at k what we will get is a two security problem and we have already already dealt with the two security problem. The two security problem results in a hyperbola uh, or the arc of the hyperbola that we have talked about in a lot of detail. And when we talk about the efficient frontier in this situation, the efficient frontier is the uh, tangent from the line emanating from the point f which represents the risk free asset. In this case, the coordinates of f would be what? It because it lies on the z on the plane z equal to k, so the z coordinate has to be k because it is a risk free asset the sigma p or the standard deviation would be 0 therefore, x would be 0 and uh, the y coordinate would represent the risk free return which would be r f. So, the coordinates of the point f which lies on this plane x equal z equal to k would be 0 comma uh, r f comma k. So, you take uh, you take draw a tangent from this point f to the arc of the hyperbola which represents the two security problem in this plane because we have fixed the I, I reiterate because we have fixed the composition of the uh, third security in this case because we are lying on this plane uh, and it would be the tangent on uh, this particular hyperbola drawn from the point of let us say it intersects the uh, point uh, intersects the hyperbola or the contact of point of contact of the tangent and the hyperbola is the point p k. So, that being the case then f p k represents the efficient frontier. So, that means what that means given a value of k or given a value of the third security we can solve this problem as a two dimensional problem uh, and the efficient frontier would be the line which that would be the tangent to the hyperbola lying in the particular plane which is which is indicated by or which is uh, uh, recognized by the composition of the third security. Now, but our problem is different. Our problem is an extended version of this. Uh, extended in the sense that we also allow the composition of the security C to vary. That means what? That means the the value of z uh, equal to k is not fixed in our full problem. Uh, the value of z, that is the uh, that is the composition of security C, can vary from minus infinity to plus infinity, assuming that short sales are allowed. So in that case, the value of z can vary from minus infinity to plus infinity thus k can uh, uh, thus k can vary from minus infinity to plus infinity. That means what? That means, we need to work out the efficient frontier for each value of k lying between minus infinity to plus infinity and this would give us an infinite set of hyperbolas and we uh, corresponding to every value of k we will do the same exercise. Let us say we take another value of k say uh, equal to l that is we identify a plane given by z is equal to l and then we do the same exercise again. We will obviously end up with a different hyperbola and uh, that lies on the plane z equal to l and then we can draw a tangent from that plane uh, from that point f which now would be what the coordinates of f would be new new point f would be 0 comma r f 
comma l and uh, because now it lies on the uh, on the uh, plane uh, z, z equal to l and we draw a tangent from uh, this point f new point f let us call it f l uh, to the hyperbola which is the new hyperbola lying on the uh, uh, lying on the plane z equal to l let us call it h l and uh, then uh, uh, we identify the point of contact let us call it p l. So, we get another uh, another efficient frontier this efficient frontier corresponds to what it corresponds to the combination of securities a and b in uh, various proportions with the composition of security c fixed at l. So, this is the process that we uh, that we, we would follow for each and every security uh, each and every security uh, composition uh, in the portfolio that means, each and every value of z from minus infinity to plus infinity. The next step the second step in this exercise is to find out that that plane that value of uh, z for which this uh, uh, this tangent that we now discover let us call it the uh, value of let us call this value of z equal to alpha. So, we have now a plane out of all these planes that are that we have from minus infinity to plus infinity let us identify a particular plane by what characteristics by the characteristic that the slope of the tangent that is the slope of the line f alpha where f, f alpha is uh, the point 0 comma r f comma alpha z is equal to alpha it lies on the plane z is equal to alpha. From this point to the point p alpha which is the point of contact of uh, the hyperbola uh, h alpha with the tangent drawn from the point f alpha. Now, this the property uh, of this particular uh, hyperbola or this particular plane rather must be that uh, the slope that I am talking about the slope that is tan, tan theta al, uh, alpha must be the maximum of all the slopes that uh, we have worked out uh, for example, tan theta l tan theta k and so many other values of k that we have taken or values of z that we have taken and we have uh, for each value of uh, z we have identified a hyperbola we worked out the tangents and we worked out the slope of the tangent let us call them tan theta k tan theta l and so on. And we find that value of uh, theta or that plane uh, such that the uh, l and the uh, slope happens to be the maximum tan theta alpha is the maximum of all the tan theta. Now, that constitutes the optimal hyperbola and the efficient frontier is what the efficient frontier is the line joining f alpha with p alpha where the line f alpha p alpha is tangent to the hyperbola h alpha which lies on the plane z is equal to alpha. So, this is the geometrical description of the problem. Let us quickly recap what I have tried to state uh, and then we will move on to further development of the problem. So, the portfolio possibilities equation that I explained in the last lecture is given by this equation. This is obtained by setting sigma p equal to x expected return on the portfolio equal to y and x 3 equal to z and eliminating x 1 and x 2 the uh, result is equation number 40. The shape as I as, uh, mentioned I have explained in a lot of detail just now the shape would be hyperbola on each plane parallel to the uh, parallel to the x y uh, plane uh, identified by a particular value of the intercept of the plane with the z axis. So, this is the this is the geom uh, geometry you have a plane which is uh, parallel to the x y plane the x y plane is the base uh, then you take a plane in the positive x direction towards me and you have a hyperbola you have this tangent drawn from the point um, from this point in this intersection uh, this point uh, to the point p dash and that represents the efficient frontier. Uh, and the, the coordinates of this point here uh, which I have um, uh, marked with the pen are given by the, uh, the value of z at this particular point. Now, the optimization uh, process let me re, re uh, explain what I have explained just now at the beginning of this class. We can visualize the three dimensional space as a collection of planes parallel to the x y plane. Uh, 
that is uh, the description of the three dimensional space. We can identify a plane from this collection by the perpendicular distance of the plane from the x y plane. In an orthogonal system, this would be the z intercept of the plane, the intersection of the plane with the z axis. The z equal to k identifies a plane parallel to the x y plane, which is at a perpendicular distance of k from the x y plane. At any point on the plane z equal to k, the value of z is fixed at k. In our problem, the z coordinate represents the component x 3 of the composition vector that is the content of security c in the portfolio. Thus, any point on the plane z equal to k will represent portfolios with the composition of c fixed at k. Hence, on the this z equal to k plane, because the content of c is fixed, our problem reduces to a two security problem, because one the composition of one security is fixed so long as we lie on a particular plane and it is given by the intercept of the plane uh, which is parallel to the x y plane with the uh, z, z coordinate or z axis. The plot of x and y on the plane z is equal to k would be a hyperbola h k as in the two security problem. For this value of z equal to x 3 equal to k, the efficient frontier will be the tangent line from the risk free point that risk free point lying on this plane z equal to k. Please note this point, it is not the risk free point lying on the uh, on the plane z equal to 0 or, or which refers to the origin. It is uh, we are to calculate or we are obtaining the tangent from the point which lies on the plane on which the hyperbola is uh, um, lying. So, the, these uh, the, the points f and the arc of the hyperbola and the tangent as well are all coplanar. So, for the point of z equal to x 3 equal to k, the efficient frontier would be the tangent line from the risk free point 0 comma r f comma k to the hyperbola h k. Let the slope of this tangent be tan theta k. This is the diagram as you can see here. This is the point f, the co uh, coordinates of the point f are 0 uh, uh, r f and uh, k and from here we draw a tangent to the arc of the hyperbola which is the which is the portfolio possibilities curve given that the composition of the security is fixed at z is equal to k or x 3 is equal to k uh, and we obtain the uh, tangent as the line f p and theta k is the angle that the tangent makes with the uh, x axis and tan theta k is the slope of that line of the tangent. Then we take another point as you can see in this diagram, this is uh, this is a new hyperbola that lies on the uh, plane z is equal to l and uh, on this plane uh, we again do the same exercise, we find a tangent from the point 0 r f l. Now, please note it is different from the point 0 r f k, it is coplanar with the plane on which the hyperbola is lying. So, we find the tangent from the point f and, and that let the point of contact of the tangent uh, from the point f to the hyperbola be given by p l. So, in, the, the, in this case the point f let us call it f l, f l, p l and the arc of the hyperbola lie on the same plane and tan theta l is the slope of this tangent. Now, however, since z is equal to k is only a pre chosen value of c, now we come to the important point. We do this exercise for, uh, for everything. Why? Because z equal to k is only a pre chosen value of c, and in actual practice, the composition of c that is k can vary over the entire real line. We need to do this exercise for every value of k that is on every plane parallel to the x y plane, because k and uh, because uh, the composition of the security c in our portfolio portfolio is also unrestricted. Uh, when we did the earlier exercise, when we fixed z is equal to k, we have fixed the composition of c uh, and now we, we are varying the composition of c over the entire real axis and therefore, we are doing this uh, exercise for every plane conceivable parallel to the x y plane. 
we identify the maximum of the values of tan theta k for every uh, for every uh, hyperbola and for every plane we will get a value of tan theta k we select the maximum of these uh, values of tan theta k let us call it tan theta alpha let us call the hyperbola h alpha and let us call the point f have, uh, have with the coordinates uh, 0 comma r f comma alpha be the point of the risk free rate at the in that particular plane. Then our efficient frontier is the point uh, is the line f alpha comma p alpha that is tangent to the hyperbola h alpha and all these things lie on the plane z is equal to alpha for which the slope of the tangent is the maximum. So, this is the this is the situation as far as the optimal plane is concerned. Uh, we identify this by z is equal to alpha and the theta that we have here is the maximum value of all the thetas that we have worked out in this process process corresponding to z is equal to minus infinity to z is equal to plus infinity. Now, obviously, we cannot do it mechanically, uh, we cannot do the exercise mechanically, we need to have some math to help us. The math is given in this following slides. The maximize tan theta is equal to r p minus r f upon sigma p that is straightforward you can see from here theta alpha or any theta for uh, corresponding to this is uh, the tangent tangent of that theta is given by r p minus r f divided by sigma p. If you take the tan of theta alpha here it is nothing but r p r is p is the expected return corresponding to point p minus r f divided by sigma p here sigma p is the standard deviation corresponding to the point p. So, when we do this excess when we do this maximization how do we do it we differentiate with respect to the various degrees of freedom in this case because we have three securities we can differentiate with respect to x 1, x 2 and x 3. Uh, so, uh, when we differentiate them uh, when we differentiate and obtain the partial derivatives and when we equate them to 0 what and we do some algebra uh, some uh, substitutions uh, we end up with the set of equations that is represented by equation 42. The so, equation 42 gives us the set of equations which are called the fundamental optimization equations. Thus, we get a set of n equations for an equal number of unknowns where for 3 unknowns we will have 3 equations being the compon components of the composition vector x equal to x i i equal to 1 to 3 up to n which would in the normal course have a unique solution corresponding to the point of contact of the tangent that is the point p to the hyperbola h alpha described in the earlier part of this lecture. Knowing the composition vector, we can obviously calculate the corresponding coordinates and arrive at the coordinates of the point P. Knowing the point P and the point F, we can work out the equation of the point of the straight line F P, which represents the uh, which represents the uh, efficient frontier uh, in our three security case or indeed the n security case. Uh, let me uh, reiterate at this point let me emphasize that the framework that we have now developed in the case of a three security case can be extended immediately to the n security case without any variations whatsoever. We simply need to differentiate tan theta with respect to all the composition vectors x 1, x 2, x 3 partially differentiate them and then equate them to 0 and uh, we get the same set of uh, uh, fundamental optimization equations um, r i minus r f is equal to z i sigma i square plus summation z j sigma i j i n equal to j or j n equal to i and uh, then this gives us the set of n equations that we need. So, let us now go, go back to our three security problem. In our given three security problem relating to r f equal to 5 percent, if we choose r f equal to 5 percent, the set of equations that we get is um, uh, by substituting values in the set of equations 42, which is the highlighted panel, we get is the set of equations that are given in the left hand side of this particular slide 9 is equal to 36 z 1 plus 9 z 2 plus 18 z 3 and so on. Solving these equations we get the coordinates of p 
uh, I am sorry, we get the composition vector corresponding to the point P, not the coordinates of P, we get the composition vector corresponding to the point P, corresponding to the point of contact of the tangent from the risk free rate to the arc of the hyperbola and we get these as x 1 is equal to 14 upon 18, x 2 is equal to 1 upon 18, x 3 is equal to 1 by 6. So, this is the this is what it is uh, the efficient frontier in this case the line F p which now you can see is lying on the plane z is equal to 1 by 6, x 3 is equal to 1 by 6. So, the composition of x 3 in the optimal portfolio in the efficient portfolio is 1 by 6 and the composition of x 1 and x 2 are also obtained by solving the optimization equations and we get these values as. Um, 14 by 18 and 1 by 18 and using all this information using the correlation coefficients and everything we are able to calculate the coordinates of the point P and they turn out to be 203 upon 6 to the power 1 by 2, uh, 44 by 3 for the expected return and 1 by 6 because this point lies on the plane z is equal to 1 by 6 uh, which represents the composition of security C in the uh, the in the efficient uh, frontier. The efficient frontier, the equation of the efficient frontier is simply the equation of the line F p which is given by this expression here on this slide. Now, we move over to the second section of this problem. The second section of the problem deals with the tracing of the entire efficient frontier. That is, if you are given three securities A, B and C and let us say you are not having risk free lending on borrowing, what would be the situation, what would be the shape of the efficient frontier. Uh, let us now tackle this problem. Now, this I will explain step wise. The first step is uh, to solve these optimization equations, fundamental optimization to corresponding to a particular risk free rate. We have already done it for the risk free rate of 5 percent and using that risk free rate of 5 percent, we have arrived at the composition of the, uh, of the point of contact of the tangent. Uh, to the hyperbola in the in the optimal uh, plane uh, that is z is equal to 1 by 6 or x 3 is equal to 1 by 6 and we get the composition as x p 1 that is the content of security A in the portfolio P as 14 by 18, the content of security B in the portfolio P is 1 by 18 and the content of security C in the portfolio P as 1 by 6. So, we know fully the we know fully the composition of the portfolio P and using that composition using the uh, the information about the um, uh, uh, variance correlation covariance covariance matrix we can arrive at the coordinates of the point P uh, including the expected return which is also given for the individual securities A, B and C. So, we can work out the expected return corresponding to the security P or the point P and hence we can identify the point P completely in this space. Now, the next step is that we take a second risk free rate. Let us say we take a second risk free rate say 2 percent R f equal to 2 percent and again solve the same set of equations. When we solve the same set of equations taking the risk free rate as 2 percent, the solution that we arrive at let us say the corresponding point is q. In other words, let us say the, uh, uh, the point uh, of contact of the tangent from the point R f dash this is the new point which has a which corresponding corresponds to a risk free rate of 2 percent with the hyperbola which has the maximum slope is uh, the point which is represented by the composition vector x q 1 is equal to 7 by 20, x q 2 is equal to 12 by 20 and x q 3 is equal to 1 by 20. Please note this point lies on a different hyperbola, uh, a different plane altogether and uh, because it corresponds to a different risk free rate. So, the, the, uh, the inferences that correspond to different risk free rates, we get the optimal hyperbola, the optimal plane as uh, being different planes uh, on the um, parallel to the x y uh, plane. So, uh, using the risk free rate of 2 percent, we 
we redid the entire exercise that we have done so far and on completing the entire exercise what we end up with is x q 1 is equal to 7 by 20, x q 2 is equal to 12 by 20 and x q 3 is equal to 1 by 20. The standard deviations and expected returns can be calculated because we know the um, variance covariance matrix and we also know the uh, expected returns on the securities A, B and C. We know their respective compositions content in the portfolio Q and therefore, we can work out the standard deviation and expected return of Q and we find the standard deviation of Q to be 5481 divided by 400 square root and the expected return to be 107 divided by 10. So, the coordinates of the point Q are identified as 5481 upon 400 1 by uh, to the power 1 by 2, 107 upon 10 and 1 by 20 and it lies on the plane that is equal to 1 by 20. Please note the earlier point and the point P uh, uh, lie on the plane z is equal to 1 by 6. So, they lie on different planes parallel to the x y plane. Please note this point. So, uh, this is uh, uh, what I have emphasized again. Uh, let me read it out once more because this is important. The hyperbola, this hyperbola lies on a different plane from the hyperbola corresponding to R f equal to 5 percent uh, that is the two hyperbola are non coplanar. In, a, in fact, the hyperbola corresponding to different risk free rates shall lie on different planes parallel to the x y plane. So, I repeat the hyperbola corresponding to different risk free rates shall lie on different planes parallel to the x y plane. The next step uh, I also explained in the last lecture is that linear combinations of two efficient portfolios is efficient. Linear combinations of two efficient portfolios is efficient. The proof is quite simple. We take two efficient portfolios, in other words, two portfolios say P and Q, which satisfy the fundamental optimization equations because they are efficient portfolios. So, they satisfy the fundamental optimization equations, and then we form a new portfolio. Let us say uh, a new different portfolio which comprises of P and Q in the ratio alpha is to beta, that is alpha P plus beta Q, where alpha plus beta is normalized to 1 for convenience. It is not necessary, but we do it for convenience. So, alpha plus beta is equal to 1 is taken to simplify calculations. And using this fact, uh, we end up with the inference that the new portfolio that we have formed also satisfies also satisfies the optimization equations albeit with a different risk free rate. What is the inference? The inference is that a combination of two efficient portfolios is efficient, is also efficient, but it corresponds to a di different value of the risk free rate because the new portfolio, the linear combination of P and Q also satisfies the fundamental optimization equations, but with a different risk free rate. I shall continue from here after the break. Thank you.